we're going to start by creating our player character. And we're going to make the character actually just a, a cube primitive. So go ahead to Game Object, Create Other, Cube. And right now we're in the Game tab, but let's switch to Scene for now so we can move things. I just like that scene, that view sometimes. So let's change the scale to make it taller, more like a person, uh, but nothing against short people, to two. And we're going to add a rigid body to this character. So there are diff lots of different ways to make a character move. Um, some people use character controllers, and that is not compatible with a rigid body. Rigid bodies interact with uh, the physics in the world. So you can change the material that they walk in or that they're made out of, and it'll interact with that material. Uh, so different choices, and there are lots of different ways to make a character move. So start by add component with your cube selected. That's going to be the character. And uh, if it's blank, it'll look like this. You can either go to physics and then find um, rigid body. You can also just type it into the search area. So we've got our rigid body component added. It gives us a mass, the drag. Um, we're using the gravity, but you could unclick this if you didn't want to use the gravity in the world. So to see how the gravity affects it, let's uh, pull our character up a little higher and press play, which will take us to the game scene. You'll see the, the character falls. So, uh, if you want it to change to fall faster, you can also change the actual gravity in the world. To do that, you, you do edit. And then project settings, physics. And the gravity is already set here to negative 9.81. You can change even the, to make it act on the x-axis. Um, I want it to fall a little faster, so I'm going to do negative 20. You can always go back and change it. I press enter, but I'm still actually in gameplay, so the change won't take effect. So go ahead and unplay, and you'll see it goes back to the original number. So change it again to negative 20. Press play, and it moves faster. If you want to see it move more obviously fast, you can just you know make it a very very high number. So we'll stick with that for now. Go ahead and select your cube again and rename it to something a character would name. I'm going to name mine Laura. And we'll go ahead and uh, script so that, right, we're going to create a script so that we can input uh, from the keyboard to make the character move left and right. So in Project tab, go to Create, C Sharp, and we're going to name this control, enter, and then double click to open the script. It's important, by the way, that you try not to rename the script, actually. You want the script to be named uh, the same as what it's named right here, and if it's not, you'll get errors and you'll know. Uh, so it's named here and here. So also don't put spaces in your, in your name because that'll mess it up as well. So this is sort of what any blank script looks like in C Sharp. It makes a class for us control that inherits from model behavior. And before the start function, that's where you declare your variables that we're going to use over and over again. So I'm going to declare public, which makes this variable public so that I can change it in inspector, like you can with the position and stuff. Public float, which means it's going to be a number, not a whole number, speed. And we'll have a private one. You don't have to label it private, though. Vector 3, move direction, equals vector 3.0. And vector 3.0 is actually just shorthand for a vector that's 0, 0, 0. So here, um, there are again, there are lots of different ways to move a character. I had first started working with using transform.position to change, but we're going to use the some of the rigid body properties to do it. So we're going to start by saying move direction is equal to new vector 3. And we're going to get that vector vector 3 by taking the input.get axis 
horizontal, in quotations, and that gets the Im keyboard input. This is in um, player settings, I believe, that so that horizontal is set to left arrow and right arrow. And if we were to say vertical, it would be up arrow and down arrow. And it'll give us a value, I think, between negative one and one. Um, and we're, it's going to be fed into the x value of our, of our vector. So we'll move our character left and right. Oh, and I'm going to multiply it by speed. Zero, zero. So the other vector, or parts of the vector are zero. So just this is just to move it left and right. And then we'll say rigid body dot add force move direction. And then you're going to want to go ahead and do command S, or you can also just say while uh, save. And it'll t change this from a circle to an X to make sure it's saved. It otherwise, it won't compile. And go back to the project and select your script, drag it to the main character, and then click the character. And you'll see that the script is now added. And the script has the default uh, value 0 for the speed. Let's change it to 10. Press Enter. And now we're going to press play. Okay, and then we can use the left and right arrows to move it. So it's not moving. Could be because I increased the gravity. Let's try changing the speed to 20. There we go. So it tips over. That means that I am controlling it. But I don't want it to tip over. So I'm going to unpause it. One way around this, let's change the speed back to 20. A lot of this will be fooling around with numbers to just get where we want. So we've got a speed of 20, and we don't want this thing to flip over. So we're going to, in rigid body, this constraints, if it's folded up, you can click on the arrow to open it up. We're going to freeze the rotation. So even though, so that even though we're using some of the physics parts that come with the rigid body, we can say, don't, don't change your angle. So that's, that's a nice thing. And then I'm also actually going to freeze the Z position because we're only moving on an X and Y axis. Play. And now I'm moving very, very slowly. So moving super slowly, and there are lots of things that I could change here. Um, I could increase the speed dramatically. I am going to decrease the mass of the rigid body. So under mass, makes it heavy. I'm going to change that to 0.5. Press enter. We're in gameplay and changing these numbers so they won't stick, but we get to see what they look like. Okay. So you can, you're free to screw around with the numbers on your own, and they tend to change as you change other parts in the game. So I'm going to stick with that right now. And you'll see that the game object has some momentum. So we get going, we go fast, and we kind of slow down. So I'm going to go out of play. And I'll, when I'm out of play, I actually want to change the numbers to mass 0.4. We'll put the speed right now for 22. So let's go ahead and change it so that we can have our character jump. So open up the script again. And we're going to add in a public float jump force. And we'll say if, let's say, oh, this is my pseudocode. We can do forward slash, which is an example. This pseudocode when you, is made by doing these two forward slashes. And it's kind of, they're kind of notes to yourself, like the parts up here, and they're not compiled from the computer. They're really, really useful for going back and trying to remember what you're doing in a script. So you, we can start by saying if uh, left, let's see, if up arrow jump. That's what we're doing. So we'll write it by saying if input dot get key down. So there's get key down get key up and get key. If I recommend when you're not sure about things like that, just Google them. 
there's a lot of information out there on Unity. Keycode dot up arrow. Open bracket, close bracket, and then we're going to make it jump by saying rigid body dot add force. So the thing with the add force, we can move things by saying by changing their transform directly and using the changing the position of their transform. Add force kind of keeps with the physics of things, so you're adding a force that will force it up. New vector three. And we'll say it's going to be zero y for the. We're going to put in jump force for the y value, and zero. Save. Okay. Now, if you click on Laura again, that variable is now exposed. Jump force. So you can fill it in. Let's try. Well, let's try twenty. Remember, it has to be a big enough force to make that object actually jump. You press up, and almost nothing happens. So I've messed around with this. I think I found maybe 200 to be a good number. Okay, that's decent. I'm gonna change it to 250, but add a play. There we go. 250. Ah, one thing, the way we scripted it, so we can move around, we can jump, but we can actually jump whenever we want and keep on going up and up and up. So we probably want to change it to restrict. We'll mess with the numbers and the controls later. We want to change the to restrict jumping. Let's say for right now, only if the uh, if the character is on the ground. And that's another problem. Well, how would we define if it's on the ground? So one way to do it is we're gonna tag items that we want to be ground is ground. So we'll say ground and we're going to create a tag for it. So select the ground object and on tag click add tag and in element zero go ahead and type in ground enter then you have to go back to the object you want to tag find the tag you just added and select it. So now that's tagged as ground and we can tag lots of other objects as ground. So go ahead back to our script, and we're going to add in a new uh, variable. We're going to call it. It's a bool, which means it's a boolean, which means it's something. It's a variable that's either true or false. We're going to start it out as false. Grounded equals false. So the character will always start up not on the ground, up in the air a little. And we'll say. If input dot get key down key code dot up arrow, and we'll add in here right before the last parentheses, and grounded. So when grounded is true, then go ahead and jump. But right now we have nothing that switches the ground the grounded on and off. So we're going to write another function for that outside of update. An update I forgot to mention is a function that gets called every frame. So that's think it can be 60, 80 times a, a, a second very quick. So we're going to go ahead and write void on and then we're not creating our own uh, new function here really. This is one that exists already in Unity and it takes as an argument and a collision item. I'm going to call ours coal. So this is on collision enters meaning when you collide with an item now, the item will have to have some sort of collider with it. If call dot game object dot tag is equal to, so if you set something equals like up here, it just sets it equal to a thing. But if you're saying equals equals, it's testing to see if something is true. So if it's true that the tag is called ground, then so if you just if the character just hit the ground, then it's grounded. Grounded equals true. And then we'll do, let's see, void on collision exit. So this is when you're exiting, leaving a collision. Collision call. 
very similar to the last function. If call dot game object dot tag equals ground then grounded equals false. So this will set our grounded on and off. And uh, this the both of these functions only get called when there's there's a collision, enter and exit for those. So go ahead and save your script and go back to Unity. Let's press play. And let's test that jump. Can you double jump? No, you shouldn't be able to double jump because it's testing to see. Good, it works. So I would suggest also really playing with your character to see, oh, 20, 22 is too fast. Let's change it to nine. You know, too slow. Get in, get into a sweet spot there. You can also change things like the mass. And you can remember, you can change the gravity. You can change the drag. Play with those things. It's the best way to figure out what they do. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to give our character a little bit of color. Again, uh, like last time, we're going to create material. I'll call this one red, enter. Click on the palette here, opens it up, choose red here, it's already there. And I can just drag and drop it onto the scene object too. Great. So now that we have a game object character that's controlled by our keyboard, um, I would keep on messing with the numbers and then next time we'll go ahead and uh, add a portal so that it can lead us to the next level. So one last option. You can see that our character is moving strangely. It, it just goes way too far when we want it to jump. So you might want to say that the uh, input for left and right is only being read actually when we're on the ground. So you only have the power to move the character left and right when you're on the ground. It also would mean that if you're playing, if we only let the player move left and right when on the ground, that if you jump, you wouldn't be able to kind of do this float back, how it pulls back on the, almost in a loop. So we're going to change that by just basically saying, in this, adding to this block beforehand, if you're grounded, then read this part. So we'll add if grounded. Open brace. I'm going to indent that. It's not necessary, but it looks nice. Save it. Go back to our game and see what that looks like. So the character jump is not as long now. Okay, and in the next video we'll be working on adding a portal so that we can start making this into an actual puzzle platformer.